Was all this made entirely from your own imagination? No. See, you were there all along. And every idea, every decision. A young man that came from humble beginnings that sort of recreated himself according to his own imagination for the love of a woman named Daisy, who belonged to a different class structure than him. Here was a film about a person who had come from nothing and who had created himself. But actually, it turns out that he has a cause, and it's all for issues of the heart. Major Jay Gatsby for Valor, Valor Extraordinary. That's right. Here's this guy, kind of crazy car, and mad new money, and a kook, and, and strange, and putting on these far out, decadent, ridiculous parties. Part super cool and totally a joke. You must know Gatsby. Gatsby? What Gatsby? I'm certainly glad to see you again. She wants to be protected and safe and live a certain way, but at the same time, she wants epic romance. Daisy tells me that you're over in West Ham, throwing your lot in with those social climbing, primitive new money types. Gatsby's the guy you want to get the girl, and, and you want Daisy to be happy, and Tom really is there to stand in the way of that and to really show you a really kind of clear view of what the world really is like. He bought that house to be near her. He threw all those parties hoping she'd wander in one night. Nick Carraway realizes just how morally bankrupt Daisy, Tom, these East Eggers are, and how, for all Gatsby's fault, he had a cause, he had a truth. gotten all these things for her, now she just, she just wants to run away. Gatsby will not let anyone rewrite the script he has written for his life. It's a wonderful romance, but it's a tragic romance. You can't repeat the past. Can't repeat the past? No. Why, of course you can. Love me anymore. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me that sweet. The way that he could both have the beauty of Gatsby, but also the complicated inner life. He's just the most committed actor in terms of looking after everyone else on set and making sure that you're giving the best performance. Gatsby is an incredible character play because I think everyone has their own interpretation of who Gatsby is and what his motivations are. And a lot of what makes Jay Gatsby interesting is what is left unsaid in the novel and what is left unsaid about Jay Gatsby. She has to go to Tom and tell him that she never loved him. Hope you're with me on this. And then you start to get up from there like, oh, that's, I don't know if I'm gonna be here for that. And then I'm like, oh no, give him It was great working with Leo. He's one of my uh, longtime friends. And so he also happens to be a great actor and I really appreciate working with him and just getting in the scenes and playing opposite him. There was something about the friendship of Toby and Leonardo and the partnership of them in character as actors and as friends that made a special possibility. She was able to encapsulate all those things that was Daisy Buchanan. She was able to portray all that sophistication in each one of the lines that she said. Charm, always pleased to meet you, Buchanan. Just to Delighted. As soon as I heard words come out of her mouth as Daisy, I just felt that kind of warmth that her voice is supposed to elicit. You know, she drew me in just like Daisy is meant to draw you in. Hey, Tom, where are we going? I want you to meet my girl. Hey, God! The character that Joel created for Tom Buchanan was as I'd imagined him. You know, he's playing him in a very kind of sexual, animalistic way. He's, he takes what he wants, Tom, and he's quite aggressive, and he's brought that whole, you know, the polo side of Tom out, which really helps Myrtle, because then I can respond to that, and I don't have to kind of reach in and pull that out of him. I want to ask Mr. Gatsby one more question. Oh, please, please go on, Mr. Buchanan, go on. What kind of a row 
Are you trying to cause in my house anyhow? He isn't causing a row, you're causing a row. These actors who are in the absolute prime of their powers, in an 11 page acting scene in one room, the plaza, going at each other. Baz put cameras outside all of the windows and so it was just us five actors in the set and it was closed off and we couldn't see anyone, crew or lighting or anything. And he just shot into the room and suddenly it really did feel that real. Your wife doesn't love you. She never loved you. You see, she loves me. You feel quite confronted when the actors are having an acted argument because you're like a fly on the wall. It's like you're the other person sitting at the other end of the camera. The heat and, the, and how close these people were in the room and, and the issue that needed to be brought up. And Jay was trying to be a gentleman about the situation, but the fire that was sort of brewing beneath him. It's such a visionary, so singular in his vision, really knows how to use that technology to bring you closer, to suck you into this world. I love working with Baz. I love the pace of it. I know you're gonna do this. He's a raconteur, he's so imaginative and creative, he's so brilliantly intelligent, and he's such a specific director that every single note I felt was so accurate and right on. I just learned so much from him. Yeah, I used to think wonderful things were gonna happen to me before I met you. Wonderful things. I knew it was a great mistake for a man like me to fall in love. I knew that. He will always have a kind of visual philosophy that he wants to follow in order to help tell the story. Just after the First World War, we see the abandonment of the kind of heavy Victorian undergarment. We see short skirts coming in. We see a kind of sexual liberation of women that allows them to be much more scantily clad. CM's costumes are so beautiful. I've never worn such beautiful materials and the styles of the clothes are so flattering and I felt like Jordan. When you come for the wardrobe fittings or you come to the set, you just want to see what she's done. Not just detailed and fascinating and realistic and authentic, but then it's just going to have that little bit of fairy dust on it somewhere, you know? Baz and Catherine, as long as I've known them, and I've known them 20 some odd years now, have always been a partnership, you know? Not just in life, but creatively, Baz bounces every single idea he has off of Catherine. She's the second part of Baz's production in every aspect. I've never worked on a film that's had such scale, but also such intricate detail in the design of it. The detail of that Gatsby's house is covered by a thin beard of new raw ivy is beautifully done, just visually. The amount of time that is spent on getting it absolutely right is just a lovely experience for me. From the set to the costumes to the props and, and, and all of those physical things that we see, and then uh, the behavior of etiquette and the dancing style. Toby and I, on the middle of this podium, <laughs> over this, you know, four metre pool, both of us going, oh my God, you know, we're going to fall in. There were scenes there where we were around Gatsby's pool, he's throwing a big party. At the end of those kind of days, everybody would, would look around and go, wow, you know, that was... That was cool, that was something to be a part of. That's not something you get to see every day. I am the son of some very wealthy people. Sadly, they're all dead now. The idea of infusing hip hop, the ideas of giving the 1920s that sort of modernism that isn't gonna separate you from being within that time period, but makes you understand the sort of cultural references and what it would be like if these people existed today. Songs that have as their refrain, I can see the green light, which is his refrain in the book. Will you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? 
the use of Lana Del Rey's version of Young and Beautiful as Daisy's theme, with its refrain, which is this incessant questioning, will you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? It was dangerous and intoxicating and thrilling and sexy, and it was jazz. F. Scott Fitzgerald came up with his phrase, the jazz age. The American dream of imagining who you can become. It holds a mirror up to society. The world is so lush and yet it's so intimate that you feel like you're eavesdropping on these people's lives. On one hand, the movie is so massive and it's so colorful and loud and crazy. But then in the close of the door, the film can then exist in silence. You must be crazy. No, oh, you see, she never loved you. It has complex, rich characters. Deep emotion. Passion. Romance. Violence. And love. There is that green light that has now manifested itself into something physical, and he has her there, but he's still staring out at the green light. Is she going to be the ultimate perception of what he thought she was in his own imagination? It's perfect. From your perfect, irresistible imagination.